What's up guys, welcome to Soccer Machine TV. Today's secret is about speed. Specifically, how to train speed as a soccer player. Let's begin. All right, so let me start off by saying that I happen to know a lot about this specific training aspect in soccer training. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to do last week's challenge because there was a lot of key aspects that I'm going to talk about today that require you doing that challenge. Uh, today's secret is more of an introduction to the speed training. Like I discussed before, I plan on doing a, a playlist on each individual training aspect. And this particular one, I know a lot about. A lot of stuff that can help you guys out. Today's secret is a soccer machine speed triangle. Okay, so the soccer machine speed triangle includes three things. Mechanics, stride length and frequency, and directional control. What I'm about to teach you is real valuable knowledge. Uh, it gives me specifically a, a huge competitive edge. So I'm not gonna tell you everything, but I am gonna introduce you to a brand new way to think about speed training. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand about the soccer machine speed triangle is that all the parts are interdependent on each other. So I'm gonna start with mechanics, but just keep in mind that they all depend on each other, like the stride length and the frequency, and also the, the change in direction, that all depends on the mechanics. And I'm starting with mechanics because in my opinion, it's, it's one of the most important things that is overlooked in soccer. Uh, from my experience, I learned that if you have proper mechanics, you can prevent injuries, and you can maximize your efficiency. So we're gonna begin with mechanics. Okay, so if you did last week's challenge, we began the drill with, with high knees. So the reason we did that is when you do a high knee drill, you start doing things that like, you don't think about, but they're, they're making sure that you have better running form. So for example, your abs are tight, your neck is neutral, none, none of this. Um, also, you're, you're firing from your glutes and your hips, and just a couple of things that you don't think about, but they're helping you run better. Now, will this fix all the mistakes you have while running? Will, will this fix all your mechanics? No, but it is a start, and it's definitely a good way to see what you're lacking. Uh, so the following examples are examples of how not to run and inefficient running techniques. So as you can tell, there's a lot of ways to run incorrectly. And a lot of the times these deficiencies, they come combined. Like the, the lick of my butt usually comes with the lick of my chest. And this is because the body finds a way to balance itself out. And in the future, I'm gonna start with the hips when fixing the efficiencies when we begin talking about proper running mechanics. But for now, I just need you to realize that that's the incorrect way to run. And right now I'm gonna show you the proper way to run. Okay, so an excellent way to tell if you have improper running mechanics is if you have pain in any parts of your body. Uh, if you have shin splints, ankle problems, hip problems, lower back problems, that's a clear sign that you have improper running mechanics. Uh, don't blame it on your shoes, don't blame it on, on the ground. It has to do with your running. Pain is not normal. So more on that in the future. Right now we're gonna move on to stride length and frequency. 